Today, we're gonna bake one of my favorite recipes from my new cookbook, The Perfect Loaf, and that is my simple sourdough. I like this recipe because it really is like a back pocket sourdough bread, and it's the perfect place to start if you haven't baked bread before. All right, let's quickly talk about the ingredients we need to make this simple sourdough. The first and most important, arguably, here is the flour. You need uh, 1,100 grams of flour. I like to use medium protein white flour for this, and this is flour that's you know all-purpose flour or something around 11 to 12 percent protein content. So you're also going to need 760 grams of water, and that water includes the 100 grams that's used to make the Levon. And then in addition, you're going to need 20 grams of salt. I like to use a fine sea salt. And then you need 20 grams of ripe sourdough starter. And we'll use that 20 grams of starter to make our Levon that ripens overnight. And that's it. You just need to flour, water, salt, and your ripe sourdough starter. And with those few ingredients, we'll make some pretty incredible bread. Let's also quickly talk about the equipment that you'll need to make this, this sourdough bread. But really for this bread, there's only a few things that are, are mandatory. And I think the first one that I would say is mandatory is your kitchen scale. It's much more accurate to measure your flour by weight than by volume. And I also find it's a lot easier to do so as well. This one is optional, but I like to have a thermometer because it gives you an idea for not only your kitchen temperature, but the dough temperature, which greatly affects fermentation. I also like to have a silicone or plastic bowl scraper. In addition, a metal bench scraper or bench knife is super handy. You're also gonna need a large mixing bowl. You can use that same mixing bowl for proofing if you clean it out, or you're gonna need two medium-sized kitchen bowls or two proofing baskets. These baskets will hold our dough. This is what mine look like. They're just simple bread baskets. You'll also need a razor blade or even a kitchen knife will work fine that's serrated or a pair of scissors to score the bread before baking. And then finally, a combo cooker or a Dutch oven. If you have a Dutch oven, a four or five quart works great or a 3.2 quart um, combo cooker works exceptionally well for all these. Those pots help trap the steam when you're baking and that lets your, your loaf rise fully and have a nice golden crust. Let's talk about the timeline for making this sourdough bread. So I like to say there's eight steps to making bread. The first step is you always wanna have your sourdough starter ready to make a Levon. I make the Levon at night, the night before I wanna mix, and I let it ferment for 12 to 14 hours overnight. And that leads us to the second step in this process. It's called an auto lease. An auto lease is simply mixing flour and some of the water together and letting it rest for some period. For this recipe, I call for a 30 minute auto lease. And what this does is it allows the gluten to start to develop in the dough. And it actually kind of strengthens the dough in a way. It means that we'll have to mix the dough less when we're mixing by hand, which is, which is helpful. So the third step after the auto lease is the actual mixing. So that's when we'll add our Levon, our salt, any reserved water, and we'll actually start incorporating everything together in the mixing bowls. After mixing is bulk fermentation. So this is also known as the dough's first rise. Specifically for this recipe, bulk fermentation will be four hours. And during that time, we'll give the dough three sets of stretches and folds. So after the four hour bulk fermentation, the next step is to scrape the dough out of the fermentation container, divide it into two halves, loosely pre-shape those pieces into rounds, and then let them rest. It's also known as the bench rest. The sixth step after the bench rest is to actually do the shaping. So with this recipe, I call for shaping the dough into two rounds or bowls. After shaping, we'll put the dough in the proofing baskets, we'll cover it and we'll pop it into the refrigerator overnight. And then the final eighth step in the process is to actually bake the bread in the, the oven. And now that we've talked about the equipment, the ingredients, the timeline, let's take a look at the first step in the process and that is making your Levon. So I made this the night before, it's been fermenting for about 12 hours. So I mixed together 20 grams of my ripe sourdough starter, 100 grams of my white flour, and 100 grams of water. Mix it together really well, and I just left it out on my kitchen counter to ferment until this morning. We won't use this Levon until after the auto lease is done, so the next step after creating this Levon the night before, the first thing in the morning you wanna do is mix together your flour and water for the auto lease. So again, the auto lease is simply just the flour in the recipe, so all 1,000 grams of flour, remember 100 grams was taken out and used for the Levon. So 1,000 grams of flour, and I have my 
660 grams of water here. I'm gonna add 600 grams to this and reserve 60 grams for later when we add the salt. Before we mix our autolyse, I like to recommend taking the temperature of the water you're gonna use for, for mixing it. This temperature gives you a gauge for how fast the dough is gonna ferment, and if you hit the temperature that's specified in the book or in a recipe, it means that bulk fermentation should take around the time that's prescribed in the recipe. So if your kitchen is on the cooler side and you take the temperature of your water, let's say it's 68 degrees Fahrenheit, then warm your mixing water up to 78 or 80 degrees. That way it warms the dough and it keeps everything on schedule. And if you have a dough whisk, you like to use a dough whisk when you bake it home to mix everything together, that works absolutely fine too. I like to get my hands in here and just kind of have fun with it, but a dough whisk is a little cleaner and if you like using one of those, have at it. Okay, it's been about, I don't know, a minute. I've been mixing this autolyse. What we're gonna do now is we'll cover the bowl, we'll let it rest for 30 minutes, and then we'll come back and we'll actually start doing the mixing. Our dough has rested 30 minutes in autolyse, and now it's time for the third step in the process, mixing. So let's first take the temperature of our mixing water and our dough. So if our dough is on the cool side, so it's, let's say, way below 78 degrees Fahrenheit, you might wanna warm the mixing water, the reserved water, it's kind of your last chance to make sure that your dough reaches the final dough temp of 78 degrees Fahrenheit. If, on the other hand, your dough is really warm, you can cool the water, you can throw an ice cube in there, and that'll help bring that final dough temp down. First things first, uncover your dough. And your dough should look a little bit smoother, and it's still gonna be super shaggy. The first thing to do is add our ripe Levon. So scrape your Levon out in, onto the top of your dough. And the recipe calls for 220 grams of ripe Levon added. Next, I like to just take the salt, the 20 grams of salt, and sprinkle it over the entire top of the dough. And using your reserved water, wet your hand and pinch all the ingredients together from one side to the other. And at this point, we're just gonna fold the dough over itself until everything is incorporated. It's not gonna be super smooth. It'll still be pretty shaggy, and that's okay at this point. Okay, so I have everything incorporated into a really shaggy mass here. Now what I'm gonna do is about four minutes of just reaching down, picking up the dough, and folding it over itself. Then rotate the bowl, reach up, and fold over. And just continue doing this for four minutes. When I fold over, I like to kind of push the dough away, fold up, stretch, stretch up, and fold over. Stretch up and fold over. So you'll notice after four minutes, the dough will lose a lot of shagginess, but it still won't be completely smooth. That's okay. Okay, I wanted to show you what my dough looks like at the end of the four minutes. So you can see it's super shaggy. This dough came out really wet. It's okay if yours looks a little more firm, and if yours looks even wetter than this, then I might add a little bit of flour and mix it in. Okay, now I'm done mixing, and it's time to transfer the dough to your bulk fermentation container. So I use another container for bulk um, I use a ceramic bowl just because I find that it is a little bit more non-stick and it keeps things nice and clean. Grab your bowl scraper, scrape your dough out of the mixing bowl and drop it right into the container. And if you have your thermometer, don't forget to take your dough temp. This temperature should be close to about 78 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's, you know, 72, 74 then expect that you might have to lengthen bulk fermentation just a little bit to ensure that the dough is fully fermented. On the other hand, if yours is 80 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit, then expect that you might need to divide the dough a little bit earlier. So now what we'll do is we'll cover this and we'll start bulk fermentation. We'll set a timer for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, we'll come back and give this dough its first set of stretches and folds. It's been 30 minutes into bulk fermentation. Since the dough is still really shaggy and weak at this point, I like to do what I call a vigorous set of stretches and folds. And the procedure, the process is really easy. You just have a small bowl of water nearby, wet your hands, reach down to the side of the, the dough, between the dough and the bowl, pull up one side and fold it over to the other side. The whole point of these is primarily to continue to strengthen the dough. Just wet your hands, slip it down the side of the dough and pull up on that side very high and fold it over to the other end. Then rotate the bowl 180 degrees, wet your hands again if you need to, 
perform the same type on that other side. So down, up very high, and over. Next, rotate the bowl 90 degrees so you'll have a long tapered rectangle in front of you. And do one more stretch and fold. Finally, rotate it 180 degrees to get that last side of the dough. Stretch it up and over. I also like to do a little bit of a cleanup in the bowl, so I'll just slip my fingers underneath and pick it up and let the dough kind of flop under. Then you have a nice smooth top. Recover the dough and let it rest for the next period, and then we'll give it another set. It's been an hour into bulk fermentation, and we're gonna now do the second set of stretches and folds. And again, we have our water here. We'll just uncover our dough. And based on how your dough is looking, you might need to do another vigorous set or you could start doing gentle sets. For me, I'm gonna do another vigorous set. My dough doesn't look like it has super defined edges and it's still kind of shaggy around the sides. So just wet your hands, scrape down into the bowl and loosen it up a little bit, pull the dough up and fold it over to the other side. Same thing that we did in the first set, we're just doing a second one here. And then at the end, I like to just pick it up again and just let it sit in there. Cover the dough and set a timer for 30 minutes. We'll give it its last and third set in bulk fermentation. Okay, it's been an hour and a half into bulk fermentation. We're gonna give this dough its third and final set of stretches and folds. And since the dough is looking strong enough, we're gonna do a gentle set here. So we're simply just gonna pick the dough up and let it fold under itself. So uncover your dough, wet your hands in your bowl of water as usual. And I like to just kind of put my fingers on the outside to help loosen it just a little bit. Now we're gonna put our fingers down the sides of the dough, between the dough and the bowl, right in the middle. And we're gonna pick up and let the front side fold right under. Now we'll rotate the dough 180 degrees, do the same thing for the other side. So you're really just lifting it up and it's just barely stretching and then it folds right under and then you let it down again. Now rotate the bowl 90 degrees and you'll have sort of a rectangle in front of you. Do the same thing for the third side and then rotate again and do the same thing for the last side. This is how I like to leave the dough for the remainder of bulk fermentation because as the dough continues to rise and strengthen, it'll push itself up and form these domed edges around the outside, which gives you a good indicator that the dough is strong enough and ready to divide. So now cover the dough and leave it for the remainder of bulk fermentation. It's been four hours, so the dough should look really well risen in your container. You should start to see some bubbles on top and at the sides. And if you look at the side where the dough meets the container, you'll see that there's a slight doming downward. And that, along with all the other signs, kind of indicate that the dough has really fermented well enough and now it has gone far enough to the point where we can divide it and proceed with the rest of the recipe. So you'll need your water or flour, and then you need your bench knife and bench scraper. Tip your bowl over and use your bowl scraper to help you get the dough out. Using your bench knife, cut down into the dough and divide it into about two equal halves. To pre-shape, all we're gonna do is take the bench scraper and put it at a shallow angle with the work surface. We're gonna turn the dough around it and pull it towards your body, organize it into a loose round, and that'll set the stage to make shaping much easier when the next step comes. Put your blade underneath the dough, use your free hand to grab the dough and pull it off the scraper. Wet your hands again if you need to keep things non-stick. And you can see it, I'm doing it at a very shallow angle here with this bench scraper. And already the dough has a nice smooth and hot surface to it. That's it for that round. You'll notice with the second piece, the dough might be in a kind of a crazy shape and it might be hard, harder to get it into a round. So just try to squish the ends together a little bit and then continue rounding. So the first step I'm gonna do is pull that towards itself and then I'll start with this long end here.
You can see at this point, my dough is not super smooth. That's okay, we're just trying to get it into this general round shape. So set a timer for 30 minutes and come back for shaping. It's been 35 minutes. The dough has rested after pre-shaping and what was once a loose and semi-tight round has now relaxed outward and the dough has relaxed enough to where we can start our final shaping and shape this dough into two bowls or round shapes. The first step before shaping is to grab your proofing basket. If you don't have a basket, you can use any medium-sized mixing bowl. Just lay a clean towel inside and treat it just like I would this basket. What I like to do is lightly dust on a layer of white flour inside. It keeps it from sticking to the basket, and that way in the morning when we go to score the dough, it drops right out of the basket without any sticking. Make sure you have your bench knife and some white flour to use for dusting to keep everything non-stick. The first step is to flour your work surface so that the dough doesn't stick. Then flour the top of your pre-shaped round. And I also like to put some flour in my hands. Use your bench knife to loosen the dough from the work surface and flip it right over onto the floured area. The first step is to take the bottom, fold it up to the middle. We'll do the same for the sides and we'll overlap them. Next, we're gonna take the front part of the dough, the, the part of the dough that's facing away from you. We're gonna pull it away and fold it all the way down to meet the bottom. A light tap here to seal it. And then we're gonna flip the whole package over. Next, we're gonna use our floured hands to push and tuck the dough under itself using our pinky side of our hand against the work surface. So the work surface is gonna slightly tug on the dough and it's gonna to start to create tension. We're gonna push it and pull. Continue to do this as the dough rounds and starts to tighten. You'll see there's a nice tight skin forming on the dough. And we're not being overly aggressive here. We're just doing, we're doing a really light push and a pull as the dough starts to tighten. Do this as many times as you need to to ensure that the dough is in a nice round shape. If it starts to stick, use your flour that's on your work surface to keep your hands not stick. So at this point, the dough is fully shaped and it's holding itself on the counter. It's ready to be transferred to its prepared proofing basket. Lightly dust in some white flour in here to ensure that the dough doesn't stick inside the basket when we turn it out for scoring and baking. Use your bench knife, pick up your dough, flip it over and place it right in the basket. And at the end, you'll have a dough that's nice and neat. Then I like to cover the dough with a large piece of plastic. If you don't have this reusable plastic, you can also use any of your reusable bag covers or anything really just to ensure that a skin doesn't form on the dough as it's proofing overnight in the dry refrigerator. All right, the oven has been preheating for about 45 minutes. The Dutch oven is inside the oven preheating alongside it. I've just taken my proof dough out of the refrigerator and you can see there's quite a bit of activity in the dough, lots of fermentation and a poke gently comes back. So now we'll turn the dough out onto the parchment paper, score it and then drag it right into the, the Dutch oven. So the first step is to put on your oven mitt, pull out your Dutch oven, place it on a, a heat proof area next to your dough, and then we'll score and transfer it right over. So I like to make just a very simple box cut on top. Just imagine a, a square right on top in the middle, not all the way to the edges with a, maybe a one to two inch border around the side. And then inside that square, I do a little cross just for some decoration. If there's any points that you missed, you wanna go in a little deeper, it's totally fine to recut in there just a little bit. Doesn't have to be super deep. You can see it's just deep enough to get underneath that outer skin of the dough and show some of the fermentation bubbles there underneath. Once you've scored it, I like to use my scissors to trim. It's okay if you have a little overhang of the paper. Place your pizza peel over the preheated oven and be careful because this is very hot and just simply drag it right in. And you can use your scissors again to very carefully trim any excess paper. And there you have it. Your dough is in the shallow side of your 
combo cooker. Now we'll transfer this to the oven and cover it with the deep side and bake for 20 minutes. Okay, after your bread dough has been baking for 20 minutes with the lid on, take the lid off and remove it from the oven and then close the oven door and continue to cook your dough for another 30 to 35 minutes. All right, that's it. That's all there is for making this simple sourdough bread. And I just really think that this bread is one of the easiest ways to bake healthy and delicious sourdough bread in your kitchen. Once you do it once or twice, I guarantee the recipe is gonna become second nature and you'll be able to do this even without having the recipe on your counter. I hope you enjoy your two loaves of fresh and delicious sourdough bread and I can't wait to see you in the next recipe. Happy baking.